This is Capital's Tokyo Report with Eric Kawa. Hello from the Capital Sport Desk. This is Capital's Tokyo Report. I am Eric Kawa. Joining me this week for more is the BBC's Mars Faruqi. Hi, so good to have you, Mars. Thank you for having me. So today happens to be day eight of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games and more actions are on the way in Tokyo. What have the highlights been so far for today? Well, the highlight certainly today is the first of those big, big events that we always associate with the Olympics, isn't it? The, the women's 100 metre final. But I guess some of the biggest news we've had coming out of Tokyo today is that Nigeria sprinter Bressing Okabara won't be competing in that. She looked very, very impressive in the heats on Friday. Obviously, of course, she knows the Olympic Games very well, the 2008 long jump silver medalist. But she's been provisionally suspended after returning a positive test for a human growth hormone that was following an out of competition test earlier this month before the start of these Olympic Games. Reportedly, she was told of her suspension earlier today. As I say, we were expecting to see a run in the semi-finals, and then definitely the final of the 100 metres today. She was one of the big medal hopes for Africa, definitely, and she was looking very, very impressive in her heat. So that's a big blow not to have uh, Nigeria's uh, Okabara competing in that women's 100 metres. I guess that means that attention certainly uh, now will turn to, to Marie-Josie Talou, who is again one of the big medal hopes, I think, today for Africa. She equaled the African record of 10.78 seconds yesterday in her heat, and, and she again is looking very, very impressive. And this is a race with so much pedigree. We've also, of course, got the two-time Olympic champion, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price of Jamaica, expecting her to make it through to the final as well and, and be right up there competing because she's obviously run some, some incredibly quick times in the last month or so. And that is the reason why really she's uh, considered probably the, the greatest female sprint of her generation. 10.63 seconds she ran back at the beginning of June. Elaine Thompson as well, her compatriot, the 2016 gold medalist, Britain's Dina Asher-Smith as well. So the women's 100 metres is an absolutely brilliant lineup, And I think you could have a winner anywhere, really, when you look at that starting lineup. But of course, it's always a, about a really, really good start, isn't it? And Shelley Ann Fraser-Price, as we know down through the years, always tends to get a very good start. Definitely. And more actions, I believe, are on the way. But what do we look forward to seeing as the day goes by and tomorrow, Sunday? Yes, so I think for the rest of today, we're obviously looking forward to, to more excitement on the track. It is really nice now to have the track and field underway. Today's day two of the athletics meet. We've got the mixed four by 400 metre relay final. So this is a very interesting race it's the first time we've had this at an olympic games so you have mixed teams of, of men and women competing for each of their nations and it's something that we're still trying to really get to know and, and understand it is a relay so it is fast it is frenetic it is entertaining but there are sometimes moments where things go wrong. And, and yesterday we thought we'd seen that for the world champions, of the USA. They were actually disqualified after failing to get their baton round within the designated areas. But on review, looking again at the uh, replays, looking at some of the TV highlights, the officials actually reinstated them on appeal. And they are the world champions who so expect them to do very, very well in that again. And if they do medal, and obviously, as we say, we expect them to do so because they are have a very impressive team. If Alison Felix features for them in that, she will make her own piece of history today if they were to go on and win an Olympic medal. She would earn a record 10th Olympic medal, which would be a record for a female track and field athlete. She's obviously done so much for her sport, the face of American track and field, also been very open about trying to juggle the fact that she is also trying to look after her children. She's obviously uh, given birth in the last few years as well and, and it talks about the challenge of trying to to have both her training and look after her child and the issues of sponsorship with it as well. She's a really, really important icon and face of track and field and she could reach a really important landmark later today. I also got her story, which actually inspired me and I believe many athletes who are actually uh, listening. Uh, but finally, Maz, before we end uh, speaking about medals, which nation holds the most medals as the Games proceed? Well, at the moment, we have China right up there with... They're at the top with 20 gold medals, 42 in total. Host Japan just behind them on 17. And, of course, you always expect the host nation to do very, very well at an Olympic Games. Wasn't perhaps expecting to see them above the United States, who have just one less gold medal with the, than them at the moment. They're on 16 just behind them. But as we talked about, we now are entering the, the athletics and, and the track and field elements of, of this Olympic Games. And we always know how strong the United States 
are in those events and, and how much they tend to dominate gold medals. So I do expect to see them move up perhaps above Japan and, and almost perhaps above China as well to, to be top of that medal table in the next couple of days. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Maz. We really appreciate that. Thank you. And that's the BBC's Maz Faruqi telling us more about the latest in the Olympic Games. The Capital Tokyo Report is brought to you in partnership with the BBC World Service. I am Eric Kawa. This is Capital Tokyo Report.